is, of course, create an actual fundraiser. So for a moment, we'll just go back to the Getting Started pages and we'll look at the different steps it wants us to take. Now, we have configured all of the settings, which was step one in the Get It Started guide. Step two is to create your first fundraiser, set a goal, and choose a display style. So we'll click that, and that will take us over to the Add New section. Once we have a list of fundraisers, we can click here and see them all. But right now, we're just going to add a new one. And you can see this is set up just as a custom post type and called fundraiser. And we will put a title for a fundraiser in here. Before I mentioned it was going to be a sample golf tournament, so let's just roll with that example. And we'll call this the fourth annual. Let's give it a general name here. John Smith Golf Tournament. And down here in the post box, you have an opportunity to add any kind of text, picture, or HTML that you would like to add in this page. So we're going to keep it pretty simple, and we're just going to add some simple information. Just to show you how this works and what it looks like on a page. And we'll add just a simple picture from our video library. And that's it. You can create a excerpt which might show up if you have uh, excerpts shown in your particular WordPress theme or if that shows up on your post types. We'll just type something in here. And then you can leave comments and track back selected for ease of the look on this page. We will get rid of that. And you can choose whether to accept simple donations or advanced crowdfunding. Now, in this case, we're just going to simply click simple donations. We'll show the crowdfunding next. You can set a featured image as well. We will skip that and we will hit save fundraising type. Now, once you click Save Fundraising Type and you save that, some other settings will drop down, and it'll show you we've selected Simple Donations. Are we going to allow recurring donations? Sure. Panel Position, we want to show this above any content, and you'll see where that comes into play. And again, you could click on the tip here, and you will show where the fundraising shows up. So the fundraising um, panels will show up above the content that we've just pushed. And then we can publish this, save the draft, preview it, or publish it. So we're just going to publish it right now. And then we will click over here to view this post. And you'll see here, again, we had fundraisers installed. And you will see just a very simple post. And here's, your, here's the content that I added. This is the fourth annual John Smith Golf Tournament. Please donate. The picture shows up. And again, this is clickable. This can be clicked, and it will show up a little bigger. And then this is just a virtue of the theme I'm using. It shows who posted the entry and that comments are closed. And this may vary depending on which theme you have chosen. And here is the donation information above the content. This is where we said above the panel. It shows right now there are zero donors. Zero dollars have been raised. And down here you can choose an amount. So you could just type in a different amount, say $1,000 and then make this donation once, daily, weekly, monthly, yearly, that's the recurring. This has a one-time donation now for simplicity and just click on donate to this project. And you'll notice that once we click that it will take us to a PayPal checkout. Now we're using the sandbox just to test this and actually not charge any real account. So we'll have to enter in our sandbox login details. So we'll go back to our sandbox 
and we will click one of the sandbox accounts we created. Again, we didn't show how to create a sandbox account. If you're a developer, you'll know how to do that. If not, check on PayPal or do a uh, search engine search for PayPal sandbox and you'll see how to set those up. So we will go back, we will log in there, type in our credentials, and then we will log into PayPal, just as you would normally log into PayPal, except we're using a sandbox so that it doesn't really charge us. It shows here the fourth annual John Smith. It's telling us to review the donation. Now, if you had a custom header, it would show up here, and that would kind of tie the PayPal transaction more into your website. And it's a great thing to do if you have a sample header set up. So we're doing this from our PayPal donate 1000 US dollars now. Now again this is just a review. And it's bringing us here saying that the donation is complete and this is what it would look like and you can click here you can go to do an overview or click here to complete your donation. So we've completed the donation and it has brought us back to the page where you would be showing a thank you message to your donor. Now as you'll see here we're getting an error message. This is where the IPN from PayPal comes into play. Normally when a donation is logged that will send information back to your plugin and it logs that information and shows the donor's name and the donation that they just made. Since we used a sandbox it's not actually going to show that because no real donation was made hence we get this error. Now it's telling us you can refresh this page because sometimes it may take PayPal a while to verify that donation in which case the donation might not show up right away and you or your donor may have to wait a few moments. Regardless the way your PayPal is going to be set up most likely is to send that person an email when their transaction has completed anyway. So most likely they will get an email from PayPal regardless of what it says here. But again, this is just an error message because I was in sandbox mode. Now, we're going to go back and show you a simple transaction. Or I'm sorry, this was the simple transaction. We're going to show you the advanced crowdsourcing transaction and show you how that works as well. Now creating a crowdfunding option is a great option and it's a really cool tool for you to use on your website to engage your community. And it's right over here in your adding a new fundraiser. And we've already pre-populated an additional fundraiser. You'll see here we've chosen the fifth annual golf tournament as if it were a year later after our fourth annual. And now, instead of simple donations, we're going to select Advanced Crowdfunding. We will save fundraising type. And once we do that, additional options will pop down. Again, we could choose above content or below content. In this case, we'll choose below content just to show you what that looks like. And then down below, you will have some other options pop up. Do we want to create a crowdfunding goal? We will click Yes. It's going to give us a start date, so let's assume that we're starting today and an end date, we're going to give this one week. Now you could choose a month, a year, however long. And then we'll input our goal, and our goal is $1,000. Create rewards. Now let's click a reward here. So what we will say is for every $250, you will win a t-shirt with the official for some reason I'm having trouble spelling official. John Smith Foundation logo. And that tells somebody that they will get a John Smith Foundation official t-shirt with official logo for every $250 that they donate. This is something similar to what uh, public radio and public television do quite often. When you donate, they partner up with people and they offer certain things. And if you wanted to partner, say, with a corporation or have some other type of sponsorship that is giving out a CD or a movie or some type of gift, you can give away that gift for a pledge of a certain amount. And this entices people to pledge or donate money. And then you could add other rewards here as well. For the 500, you can get a t-shirt and a flat screen TV. That may be a little aggressive, but it just gives you an example. And then down here, you have the ability to customize a thank you message. And if you click over here, you'll notice the different 
types of codes we can use to make this personalized. We can use the person's first name, last name, a donation total, and this actually pulls the information from PayPal that was entered and spits it back out in your thank you page. So we're just going to put a general thank you here, which says thank you for donating to the fifth annual Sean Smith Foundation golf event. And then should we send an email to this person and we will click yes, it will also send an email. Then you have an option to actually customize the email that is sent out from the system. And you'll see here it's pretty simple. You can edit this again with the same types of codes uh, so that you can make it a little bit more personalized. In this case we'll allow comments and trackbacks and then we will hit publish. And once that's published, we can view it. And when that page loads, you'll notice the donation post looks very similar to the simple donation, except there's a little bit more information included down below. And we chose to include the donation information below the content this time, and you'll see that's where it shows up. And a little bit of difference here is you have this bar, seven days left, and this bar will fill up with a color as you raise or take donations. And down below, you'll also notice we chose to reward levels, 250, 500, or they can click none for special reward. And they can, depending on which one is entered, that number will be populated up here. And you could click donate to this project, and it'll go through the same process before with PayPal as we showed you earlier. Now, this is a great way to, again, engage your supporters in putting a time limit on this and also not charging them until a specific goal is met. And, and this would be more for an, a specific event or a specific type of donation that you're asking for where it would be crowdfunded and people are not going to be charged until that goal is reached. So it's pretty simple to set up either a, a standard donation or fundraising event type of post or a more complex crowdfunded post. Now before you go live with your donation, remember to come back to settings and if you've used the sandbox mode, make sure you change that and push that off onto a live server. And if you don't want to use advanced crowdfunding, you could deselect that and that won't ask for your additional API credentials. But we're going to put this back to live and then we're going to click Save Changes. And once you do that, you will be ready to roll with taking donations on your website. And the only other thing that I recommend doing is changing some CSS for these donations. You'll see here, it's a pretty clean interface, but you may want to change these a little bit, changing the CSS to make this look different and to show up differently. Now, this was the standard look. We're going to show you what a different style would be in the presentation settings. You'll remember before we had a few different options to choose the template for the way that's going to display on your post. So we're going to change the template that is used for that donation. And down below you'll see the style settings and we had that set as basic. So we can change that and we can come down here and choose for example minimal and we'll click save changes. And then we'll go back to the fifth annual golf tournament that we chose and we will refresh that page and you'll notice it changes just a little bit now there's a button to the right of the amount these numbers got bigger that are pre-populated along with the check boxes and you can play with these different settings and change these we could change it to note and then again refresh the page and it will change the way it looks down here it basically takes a little yellow sticky in the background and puts that information right here and then finally we will choose the dark to show you what that looks like for people who are using a dark background type theme and you'll see here the bar and it puts a dark background to this. 
Now again, if you want, you can come down here and select None Custom CSS, and then you would add your own CSS 